Welcome back, boys and girls. I am Charlie Craven, and today I'm going to tie for you a uh, uh, fly that's been around a while and uh, has always caught fish and still does, and uh, has got a few little tricky tricks uh, to tie in it. So this is a lime trude. Um, I used to tie these back in the day for West Bank anglers up in uh, Alpine, Wyoming, I guess is where they technically are. Um, but this is a uh, an attractor dry, and... Uh, um, you know, kind of along the lines of which where you'd fish a, a raw wolf or uh, other attractors, but a little bit more, um, or can be a little bit more hatch specific. So, um, obviously, you could tie these with any any variety of colors. Uh, the word trude, dudes, uh, means that it's got this down wing, uh, typically made of calf tail or calf body. Um, so you can have a royal trude or a coachman trude or a lime trude or a yellow trude or a tan trude. Um, you know, any variety of colors. Uh, they're all tied the same way. They're just uh, got typically just different color dubbing for the body. So <clears throat> I'm going to twist you one up here, um, and I'm going to tie this one on a new hook from Umpqua. Uh, this is their XC110, um, and these hooks I've been pretty impressed with so far. Um, they're true barbless, and they're sticky crazy sharp. I actually uh, just messing around with that other fly in the vise there. I stabbed her into my thumb right there. That point is is sticky sharp so uh, you actually got to be a little bit careful um, so I'm going to tie you this on a size 14. 14 16 is a, a typical range on these um, and I'm going to start with some 14 knot vivas in black <clears throat> and I'll start this thread oh, about three quarters you know 75 percent of the way uh, of the way up the hook toward the eye and I'm going to wrap all the way back to the bend now uh, the tail on this fly <clears throat> is golden pheasant tippets and uh, um, you know it's a well a very traditional material you don't see it used a lot um, these days and uh, uh, for no apparent reason you know you see lots of flies with little hot spots on them this is uh, sort of a built-in natural hot spot um, and some good contrast some good barring if I put my thumb up there you can see it's got black tips and a black stripe um, and what you want to look for on these feathers is fibers that will allow you to make a tail uh, that shows both of those black bars. So let me get this held just right. Um, so if I measure this a shank length long, um, I am beyond the second bar. Um, so my tail will come out something like so. So both of those black bars will show. Um, and I'm sure that makes a, you know, probably 30 to 40 percent difference in the amount of fish you'll catch um, by having both those bars showing. So you can thank me later for that. So I'm going to peel a little clump of those off. I've probably got a dozen fibers or so. Uh, and I'm going to measure that a shank length long. Now this XC110 is a standard length hook. It's not an extra long hook. Um, uh, you absolutely could tie this on a, on a longer shank hook if you wanted. But I'm going to tie those in at the bit, and you can see how both those black, black stripes show on the feather. And I'm going to wrap forward over those butt ends, back up to about where I started the thread. Then I'll nip those ends out. Now, um, typically the... Uh, uh, body of this fly is made out of uh, chartreuse rabbit fur, which is what I used on this sample here that I tied up a little bit earlier. Um, that Nature Spirit um, hairs mask dubbing works great for that. Uh, I'm going to use some Superfine here, um, just because I like it to be a little bit tighter. Um, so I'm going to take some chartreuse colored Superfine. And, you know, this is a size 14, so it's going to take more dubbing than you think. Um, but that is not to say that it takes five pounds of dubbing, so don't get carried away. Uh, but I'm going to start this fairly fat and kind of work a nice, nice strand of dubbing onto my thread. Um, and the reason you want to have this dubbing on here fairly thick is we're using black thread with a light colored dubbing over the top. Um, so if you do a super thin layer, your thread will show through. Um, and you might see some of that here where I start this. Um, Probably not though, I did a pretty good job. I've got a, a pretty solid band of it on there. I'm going to use that bare thread to work back and get my first turn here just at the base of the tail. And then I'll work forward 
and you saw that I, I didn't even hesitate there because I've been doing it um, with this longer point these comp hooks have a, uh, a longer point um, because they're true barbless they extend that point to make it hang in the fish a little bit better um, and it does take some getting used to when you're tying on them that that longer point is uh, not where you anticipate it um, and you very often catch it with your thread or your dubbing like I just did so I'm going to dub uh, right up to that 75% point and then I'll come back and I'll start to work a, a taper up here. I'm going to go another turn back here. You can see how I can kind of stretch that dubbing out a bit. Just control my taper a little bit better. Um, I didn't change the amount of dubbing on the thread, I just changed where it went. And when I run out of dubbing, I should be uh, up on bare hook shank there at the front. Um, I've got, you can see I've got a little strand of dubbing there. I can barely see that with my eye, but you guys can see it on the camera. Um, I'll show you what to do with that. I'm going to wrap a thread base right up to the hook eye and back again to the front edge of the body. And if I didn't tie that down, I didn't because I was holding on to it, just cut it out of there. Um, there's another 7 or 8% more fish. A little gift for you. All right, so we've got a little tapered body there. Now the wing is going to be calf body or uh, calf tail here. Um, I have always much preferred calf tail, or I'm sorry, calf body hair to calf tail. Calf tail is just a pain in the neck to work with, and calf body stacks up nicely. And uh, um, frankly, I, th I think it's just just easier to work with. Um, if you have the patience to work with calf calf tail hair, by all means, knock yourself out. Um, now, I guess that maybe comes from my commercial tie-in days where um, you can get calf tail to get somewhat straightened out, um, but it takes a lot of time and effort to do it. Um, where calf body, um, you just kind of clean out like deer or elk hair, uh, particularly if you've got a good chunk of it. Um, clean it out like you would deer or elk hair and stack it up and go to town. Uh, so I've got a, a nice healthy clump here. And I'm going to tie this in. I want to measure it from where my thread's hanging there, just at the front of the body, um, to about midpoint on the tail. And I'll grab that hair in place there. And I'll take a turn around it and anchor that down. And I want to wrap over it, making a band right up to the front edge of that body. And then I'm going to come forward over those butt ends to just short of the hook eye. And I'll lift those butt ends up and try to get them all in one one cut except for that one right there. I like to leave one um, usually on the far side so it's hard to get to. Yeah, it's hard to get to, all right. But I got him. And then I'll wrap down over those buttons. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this. Let's see. Uh, if I hold that just right, you see that little stub is still sticking out. So I can bring my thread in front of that and sort of mash that down and catch it so now it's gone. It's just a way to clean up the head. You can actually use the thread uh, to maneuver that last little bit of stub in sometimes. So I'll bring my thread right back to the front end of the of the body, right at the base of the wing. And um, you can use rooster, well you want to use rooster, but you can use neck or saddle feathers. And I've got two neck feathers here. And I've got a brown and a grizzly. And I'm going to strip the butt ends so I expose some bare stem. Let me get a hold of that. And I stripped a little bit more on the inside of the turn. Uh, so the bottom side of those feathers I stripped just a little bit more than I did on the top sides. Um, and that's going to clear that first turn around the base of the wing there so it doesn't, doesn't mess things up when I get there. And I'm going to get both these feathers stacked neatly and trim the stems to the same length. And then I'm going to tie these in right at the base of the wing. And I want to anchor these down good and tight here. Um, it'll even spin my thread a bit. I can get a hold of it. Anchor those feathers down good and tight. And what I'm trying to do here is keep this thread base that I'm going to wrap the hackle over um, as even as I can. One of the inherent problems on flies like this, um, in that we've got a, a hair wing tied down and then we're going to try to wrap a hackle over, over the base that we just created um, is you very often end up with a taper and if it's a very steeply sloped taper um, that hackle wants to slide down that hill so what we're trying to do is even this out as much as we can um, and we'll wrap the hackle over just this even part and use the drop here at the front just to build the thread head um, so we're going to anchor that down good and tight 
bring that thread forward again and again. Just try to keep everything even. And I'm going to leave my thread hanging up off the hook eye, just a little bit behind the hook eye there. And I'll take my two feathers, um, and I always like to wrap these both at the same time under good tight tension. I'll get four or five turns of these two feathers. And you can see I'm still up on top of that, that thread base. And I'll tie the feathers off there with a couple turns. And come in and nick those butt ends out with the tips of my scissors. And kind of sweep everything back. And then I'm just going to make a few turns here to cover those butt ends. And we'll come in and whip finish over the top. So you get sort of an extended head, but a much cleaner hackle tie off. Like so. Now one thing I like to do to these, any hair wing fly, um, I like to turn that fly upside down and then I'll come in with just a little shot of thin head cement um, and let that kind of run back in the base of the hackle and wings. Like so. And that is our finished lime trude. Um, I fish this fly a lot. Um, you know, back in the day I used to fish it a, a ton, um, and I've still got a lot of them in my box. You know, this is a fly that uh, um, you can kind of pull out if you've got weird light conditions. It's hard to see a, a darker colored fly. Um, that, that bright white wing really does show up, and this will hang a dropper. It's got enough surface area to hold a dropper up as well. Um, but a couple little tricks on how to tie that one. So that's the old lime trude. Uh, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. I'm Charlie Craven. Stay tuned. There's more coming.